Hey, um, there have been some questions about uh, these proband studies and about um, genetic interactions. So, um, as we talked about in class, there's kind of if if we have an increase in comorbidity, there are really three ways that this could happen. Um, one way is that um, for one disease, for example, Tourette's, um, there might be um, the, some genes A, B, and C, and those genes cause a risk of Tourette's, and then that may actually manifest as Tourette's. And then once somebody has Tourette's, there might that that causes a risk of OCD, and then that may actually manifest in OCD. Um, and then a separate set of, then there are humans with OCD alone, and so there was a separate set of genes that must put them at risk, um, because if they have OCD without Tourette's, then they can't be going through this upper pathway. Um, and then um, the second way you could have comorbidities is if it's the reverse, where um, there are genes that increase the risk of OCD, and then OCD, having OCD causes an increased risk of Tourette's. Um, but then other humans get Tourette's without OCD, so they must have different genetic risk factors. The third is that there's genes M, N, and O that increase the risk of either or both. Um, and, um, and then the third is that actually there could be just that these diseases have absolutely nothing to do with each other and there's absolutely no way that they interact. Um, but in that case, we would see no increase in comorbidity. Um, so um, if we start with probands with just one disease, then based on, for example, probands with just OCD here in green, then based on whether we see, if we see, if this was our universe, if this was the way these things interacted, then our relatives would only have an increased risk of OCD, and there would be no more relatives with Tourette's than, than in the general population, because the only genes D, E, and F are present in our probands, because we have probands with just OCD. Um, if we live in universe B, where this is the way that Tourette's and OCD interact, then we would um, see uh, that our probands, they have OCD, so they must have genes G, H, and I. They went, but they didn't, whatever the, this may here, in terms of may resulting in Tourette's, didn't happen to them. But their relatives, some of their relatives will have OCD. Some of their relatives will go all the way down this uh, and will have Tourette's, so we'll see an increased rate of OCD and both. But since the probands didn't have any JKs and Ls running around more than the general population, there's no increase of just Tourette's risk, and so nothing, no just Tourette's. Um, if we're in universe C here, where there's the same genes that give rise to risk for both, then we see an increased risk of just OCD, an increased risk of just Tourette's, and an increased risk of both. In fact, if you do this study, this is the result you get. And what that tells you is that, in fact, OCD and Tourette's interact in this way. There are a common set of genes that give rise to risk for both. However, if we were to do a badly designed study where we have probands with OCD and Tourette's, so we start with probands that have both, then it is a useless study. And the reason is, in universe A, so our probands with both, we have A, Bs, and Cs in our probands. Some of our probands have D, Es, and Fs, and they got OCD um, independent of their Tourette's, and some probands got OCD because of their Tourette's. Um, and so since our probands come with this sort of mix, and all of these genes are at increased risk in our rate in our probands, then we will see relatives with just OCD, relatives with just Tourette's, relatives with both, and, rel and an increased risk of all of them. If, we're, um, if the universe that we live in is universe B, and we start with these probands with both, by the same logic, we're going to end see relatives with just OCD, relatives with just Tourette's, and relatives with both, all at an increased rate from the regular population. If we have, if we live in universe C, which is the real universe that we live in, where these uh, there's common genetic risk factors for both diseases, starting with our probands with both, we're going to see some relatives with just an increased risk of Tourette's, some relatives with, uh, we're going to see an increased rate of Tourette's in our relatives, an increased rate of OCD in our relatives, and an increased rate in both in our relatives. And even if we live in universe D, which is definitely not the universe we live in because there is increased comorbidity that's been shown previously, but even if, just based on this data alone, if we lived in universe D, then our probands have genes P, Q, and R and genes S, T, and U because they were unlucky and had both diseases. And so in the relatives, some of the relatives will have uh, um, Tourette's at a higher rate than the general population. More rel relatives will have OCD at a higher rate than the general population. And some and relatives will have both at a higher rate than the general population because these two genes. And so the reason this 
probe ends with both as a badly designed study is that in any possible genetic relationship, including the sort of non-relationship in university, we predict the exact same thing. And so when we start with the study and what we find is that probe ends with both, some relatives have one, some relatives have the other, some relatives have both, totally uninteresting, totally uninformative. One thing that can help with sort of making sense of all of this is thinking about Tourette syndrome and depression. Um, I mentioned in class briefly that there is an increased comorbidity. The reason that is widely accepted to be true for why this is, is that there are some genes, call them genes A, B, and C, that give people um, an increased risk of Tourette syndrome. Those people who have Tourette syndrome, that causes um, a lot of teasing, not always, but often, which can be stressful, and stress increases risk of depression. So the reason that people find have major depressive disorder along with Tourette's is not because of a genetic relationship, but rather that the, once Tourette's manifests, that causes an interaction with the environment, which then increases risk of depression. So going back to our previous slide, this is kind of like this universe A here we were talking about. Now, there are also humans that have other genes, we're calling genes D, E, and F, that are unrelated and can just increase risk of depression in general. Um, what I would recommend that you do is spend a little bit of time thinking about if we find a bunch of probands with just Tourette's syndrome, what is the chances of finding relatives with Tourette's, relatives with both, and relatives with just major depressive disorder? Um, then assignment number two, if we find a bunch of relatives with major depressive dis if we find a bunch of probands with major depressive disorder, what's the rate of Tourette's going to be in their relatives, what's the rate of depressive disorder going to be in their relatives, and what's the rate of both going to be in their relatives. Um, and then um, finally, if we find a bunch of probands with both, remember some of our probands might have both because of this teasing but some of our probands might have both just because they came with two different sets of genetic risk factors they kind of got unlucky in the genetic lottery and so if we if if we find a bunch of probands with Tourette syndrome and depression what's the rate of depression going to be in the relatives by itself what's the rate of Tourette's by itself going to be in the relatives and what's the rate of both and which of those two of those three studies are useful in figuring out this relationship, and one of them isn't. Um, and so think about that and why that is.